What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla Spy, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall market as we approach Monday. You should be watching for the price action as time progresses. But before I break the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. But in $1,000, you're guaranteed 15 in total. This offer ends very soon in just about 18 days from now. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's break down what's happening with the markets. So I just wanted to note something important, guys. I'm actually pre-recording this video on Saturday. And the reason why I'm recording this video on Saturday is because I'm going to be very busy for Sunday. I have a wedding to be attending. So I won't be able to record anything for Sunday. So with me doing this, it is possible there could be new pieces of news I'm not really going to be accounting for, which could you know, once again, change things, but I'm just going to focus on what the charts are showing us as of like Saturday evening. And also as of what we're seeing, at least based off technicals for now. So I want to focus primarily on that. Let me just mention that as far as Neo goes, we are trying to break out right over here as we're holding above our 20, <laughs> excuse me, and 200 EMAs. We're doing a very, very good job so far. This does favor more upside, at least on our forever time frame. The shorter term time frames do show we might actually dip first before we continue higher. But so far, there's a little bit more potential for this to continue to climb. Now, I do think we could be testing the five resistance, but we'll have to watch and see what kind of reaction we get, especially with some data that's coming out. So I want to focus on that. One thing worth noting is that before the market opens on Monday, we have Goldman Sachs and BlackRock announcing their earnings, not to mention First Bank after the market closes. So lots of bank earnings are going to be coming out for the next couple of trading days, and it's going to be very, very important. Uh, will this affect NEO to a large extent? Probably not, but it could have an effect on the whole market. And then on top of this, I want to mention that for Monday, we don't really have much data coming out until 11.30 a.m. when we have the three-month and six-month bill auctions. So that's something else that's worth noting. On top of all this, I just want to mention that as far as NEO goes, uh, there's getting a, it's getting a lot of exposure, if you're, especially for the ES8. Uh, all over Europe, we're seeing a lot of exposure, a lot of excitement because of this, and this is going to be very, very interesting. On top of this, we're seeing some negative news that also happened to come out despite NEO's big innovations. NEO has emerg emergency braking systems that are being incorporated in their technology, which is going to help a lot of safeties uh, and a lot of other things to kind of like improve, like safety scores and such. Uh, but there are some roadblocks when it comes to kind of expanding to Europe. I'm still seeing a lot of headlines about this. The new 20.5% tariff is going to be implemented, especially for the European cars. So not the best of news for them kind of trying to be sold in Europe. But NEO is not necessarily backing down, and they're still confident they're going to get a lot of sales. They're just going to have to make adjustments based off this. On top of all, the, on top of all of this, we also have about 52 million in volume, which is actually not bad whatsoever. And we're starting to see a lot more, uh, a lot, a lot less shorting compared to before, which is actually a pretty good sign. On top of this, we have Bank of America Securities giving this a neutral rating. Not to mention the price price ratio is still down over here. It's still trying to climb right here, so we're going to see if this could end up improving. Mondays tend to be green only about 49% of the time, so it's not really much of a shift. So we'll have to see how things go from here. But now I just want to focus on the technicals. So as far as NEO goes, I just wanted to mention that on the 30 minutes time frame, there is some signals that show that we might actually dip a little bit to retest 4.85, if not 4.78, that 4.8 area could be retested. But we're going to be watching to see if we get a balance between our 15 and 20 EMAs to go all the way up to our $5 target. So it does seem to me like it's going to dip and then balance. Uh, but there's a big but. Even if we do get a dip in balance, I think the $5 target is possible. But we have to be very careful at this resistance just to see what kind of reaction we get. So I'll be looking to see how that ends up going. But technicals do favor upside, at least for now, for Neil. So we'll just have to see how things progress. For other factors out there, I just wanted to mention that SPY, SPY on the four-hour time frame is actually looking a little bit weak. We have a nice double bottom like structure as we close below 560. And this does favor a move to the downside as a stronger possibility. To be bullish, you want to see us break past 561.69. If that breaks, watch 564. Uh, as of right now, it's not looking very probable that we're going to break through all of those. What, what seems more probable is we might kind of pop in and start dipping a little bit. And I think we're going to be making a move all the way down to 557 to touch our 20 EMA, not to mention fill this imbalance. So look for a little move to the downside and see if we hold 557 or not. That's the most likely possibility. So I'm favoring that a little bit more. For Tesla, it's the same thing, essentially. Tesla's kind of consulting. We actually close below 250, which is not the best of signs. If we do close above 250 or even like hold above it, that would be a better sign. But the chart looks like it's going to get a little dip, in my opinion, if we fail to hold 248. We also close below our 
four hour 20 EMA, which is a sign of weakness, which suggests that there's going to be a risk of us coming down, down to about 245. Now, even if Tesla does dip a little bit, it could still rebound very, very sharply. There's still a lot of buyers defending it, as you guys saw on Friday. It also closed green. So I think there's a good chance we kind of dip a bit and try to bounce. That's the most likely possibility. For ES, for futures, as you can see, we're kind of dipping a little bit. I think we might be testing our 20 EMA around 56, 50. Uh, four, and we'll see what kind of reaction we get from there. But I do see a little dip coming. NVIDIA is also doing something very similar. As you can see, we didn't just continue to break past 132. We pushed all the way up towards 120 and only to just consolidate. Uh, if we reject here, I'll be looking for 127 as key support, and we'll see what kind of reaction we get from here. So if this high here we came down, we could be making a lower high than reject. This suggests that there could be a little bit of a move to the downside for NVIDIA. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin is trying to push a little bit higher towards 58,800. We're at resistance right now. So we'll have to see if Bitcoin can break here. If we break past this resistance, I'll be looking for 60,000. If we break past 59,000, if you reject here, we're going to be coming back down. My gut is telling me it might kind of pop and then drop and make a move back down to about 58,000. And we'll see what kind of reaction we get from there. So that seems like the most likely possibility heading into Monday for the QQQ. Very similar to SPY, we have this high here. We came down, we're establishing a lower high. If we fail to break above 495.29, we're going to be dipping down to 490 all over again. If we do break this, we do have potential to go up to about 498. But that's looking less probable. It's actually favoring 490 is a stronger possibility, in my opinion. For Apple, it's the same setup as uh, the QQQ. As you can see, we had a high here. We came down, established a lower high. I see a test of 228 coming. That's looking more probable in my personal opinion. So you bullish, you want to break past 232, but that's looking less likely. It looks like we may just establish a lower high and continue from there. For Supermicro, we're attempting to break out right, he right here. Look at 920 as resistance. If that breaks, look for 940. If you reject, you're going to be dipping back down to 889 and eventually 873. So we'll just have to see how things go. The four hour does have more potential right now. We do have potential to push higher. But we'll just have to see how this kind of continues from here as we have this resistance in the 920 area. My gut tells me we might go a little higher and consolidate at 920 and see what kind of reaction we go uh, towards. So look for some volatility right over there. The IWM may retrace a little bit as we're fighting some tough resistance at this 214 areas. Look for a test of like 210 and watch to see if we get a big bounce after that. But look for a little retracement, in my personal opinion. Coinbase is also kind of retracing. We might be retesting around the 216 area and then see what kind of reaction we get. Amazon also kind of rejected off this 50 EMA. So I'm going to be looking for 192 as a potential target. Meta is barely holding 497. If this fails, we're going to be dipping even lower towards 492. So I'll be watching to see how this ends up progressing. Microsoft is the same thing. We're kind of rejecting off our 50 EMA, which opens the doors for about 450. And then Google has the same setup. Uh, we basically have potential to come all the way down towards 185. GME is also looking like it has an uptrend, but it's not looking that strong. So I'll be looking for assistance at 26.5. We'll see what kind of reaction we get from here. If you reject, I'll be looking for 25.26. But watch and see if we continue to respect this uptrend. AMC is also consolidating around this 5.25 area. We may continue to do so, so we'll have to see if we get a break through this or not. As of right now, we just want to be very, very patient. With that being said, guys, uh, I think AMC and GameStop are just consolidating, but some stocks like NEO may dip a bit and start to bounce. There's a little bit more upside potential for NEO to hit the $5 target, so we'll see what kind of reaction we get up there as the technical still remain bullish. But the market, to me, looks like it's going to dip soon, just temporarily, so we'll see how things go. With that being said, I want to thank you for listening. Please have a great day, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Thank you, and peace out.